Hello! Today we'll be reviewing Five Nights at Freddy's Fazbear Frights 1 Into the Pit, or it's called Into the Pit, and it's number one of the Fazbear Frights books. So, as you can see right here, here's a book. I got it in hand, obviously, and there's the title, you know, there's the title, close. If you, if you, if you have, you know, done the games, read first trilogy of the Silver Eyes trilogy, you probably know this character already. It's a giveaway. And there's a back, and I'm going to tell you the generality of the book. It says, what do you wish for most? It's a question that Oswald, Sarah, and Millie think they know the answer to. Oswald wishes his summer wasn't so boring. Sarah wishes to be beautiful. And Millie wishes she could just disappear from the face of the earth. But in the twisted world of Five Nights at Freddy's, their heart's deepest desires have an unexpected cost. So, we're going to get on with the three tales reviews. And just to know, these kind of books like give out messages, you know, some of these characters, you know, they're not that good and stuff. But... I think the first character, Oswald, is not that character, you know. He's just bored and stuff. So the first tale starts with, you know, Oswald. He and his dad, you know, some issues there. Um, he, they take, they have, you know, problems with their job. This is the first tale, by the way. And unexpectedly, his dad always takes him to this sketchy pizza place. I don't remember the name though, because. In the last third of the book, but I do remember based off memory. I do remember this book very much though, because the tales keep you in the mind of it. So yeah. So basically that he his dad always takes him to this pizza place and they it's sketchy. There's no one there, it's dirty, it's explained, you know, dirty, and then there's and then unexpectedly Oswald discovers this dirt like Ball pit, it's described as dirty, you know. I do believe ball pits are dirty, you know. I'll never go into one. And, you know, since times right now, you wouldn't do that at all. So, anyways, he wanted to escape because he wanted to be there longer, I think. I don't remember everything, so don't, don't get me into that because I don't remember everything. This has been a while since I read this. I think, yeah, it was in 2021 when I was last time I read it. I don't remember what time. Like I said, I don't have that good of a memory. But anyways, continuing on, he went into this ball pit. He went under it. And then unexpectedly, he arrives at this, you know, place that seems like in the 1980s. He sees arcade machines. It's like a big place, bigger than that sketchy pizza place. In the beginning, I said, I talked about. So, continuing on, he meets these two... These two other, you know, similar age kids to him. And they hang out. And continuing on, he meets with them. Continues to meet with them. But there's one thing. He sees a yellow rabbit, a yellow rabbit suit that's looking at him every time he goes there. And he's, uh, he gets suspicious, but... He, can, he continues on to visit his friends. Like every time his dad takes him to pee, he would go under the ball pit and stuff and meet with his friends. But then one day, unexpected, he was like walking along the house of the 1980s one when he went under the ball pit. The yellow rabbit was following him. So what ended up happening is he dashed into the ball pit and then the yellow rabbit went with him, went and him and his dad was there. He was trying to look. He, you know, he was there for a long time that his dad was getting worried for him. So, to get, his dad was getting worried for him. So, he had to um, end up looking. He went in a sketch piece. And then, he, he, he decided to look in the ball pit. And then, what ended up happening is, when Oswald got up and the, the yellow rabbit was there and the yellow rabbit ended up pulling his dad under the ball pit and Oswald didn't see his dad and the yellow rabbit ended up coming up and you know what when the yellow rabbit like 
Everyone else besides Oswald thought the yellow rabbit as his dad. It looked like his dad. Like his mother thought that. Um, other people and the sketchy pizza owner of that sketchy pizza place too. So he continued on with life, you know. But he was getting very suspicious because the rabbit was just like not bothering him. But everyone thought it was his dad. And obviously it wasn't. So he wanted his dad back. So what ended up happening was the yellow rat ended up following him back into the sketchy pizza place. And then he ended up getting the yellow rabbit back into the ball pit. And then his dad just came out, came back. Like nothing happened. He's like, what just happened? He's like, what just happened? And then it's like, oh, okay. So yeah, he got his dad back. That one wasn't that bad of a story. At least the main character survived. His father survived. Next up, the next tale. It's Sarah. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. So she goes to the sco school. She doesn't think highly of herself. She thinks she's ugly. She thinks she doesn't like her body type. She compares herself to these slim girls. She wants to be friends with them. But she has this friend. I don't remember the friend's name. I'm sorry, like I said before. She has this friend who wears the clothes Sarah thinks that she shouldn't wear. So, Sarah thinks that her friend is acting like, like, but her friend doesn't really care about what others think of her. And I like that too, so. And continuing on, Sarah keeps thinking of how herself she wants to be friends with these popular girls who are like skinny, you know, and stuff, like wear these fashion clothes like they look like without you know flawless like basically flawless she like she wants to be flawless Sarah wants to be flawless but her friend doesn't think that her friend thinks she's fine the way she is and she is the fine the way she is so continuing on that was during their school time you know and stuff and Sarah went to this I, I don't know if it was a junkyard or something it was like junkyard or something she found uh in a animatronic little girl and you probably known her as she looks like baby basically you know baby from sister's location the game or yeah so she brings her home and then the animatronic ends up telling her I'll give you what do you want to look flawless wear this necklace and then do not ever take it off and I'll give you any wish you want. I'll give you any wish you want. But you just have to wear the necklace. Sarah agrees. Sarah agrees. She puts on the necklace. And the, you know, and trying to act like this nice friend, you know, and stuff. And obviously her wish is to be flawless. She wishes to be more skinnier. She wish her, she was basically flawless, you know. New clothes, just like a total different person. So every time she would wish this, she would always get, you know, these little things, different things. And her friend would always see that and she always wondered. And then she obviously got with the popular girls when she changed, you know, those wishes came true. And yeah, and she ended up not being friends with, the, you know, she started not, you know, not caring about her only friend that didn't care about how she looked. And stuff so her her used to only be friend um she wasn't friends with her anymore so yeah continuing on what ended up happening is she started like in the end she started like getting sick and stuff you know and like what ended up having the ends was that the animatronic girl Actually, she ended up dying, you know, the main character and the trying girl took like her skin. She's like, oh, I'm beautiful. I'm flawless. Like, I love it. Like, she ended up being that girl in the beginning. Sarah, I'm trying to be that. So the message here in that second tale is do not think you are fine the way who you are. You don't have to change yourself. You don't have to. To change yourself, you're fine perfectly the way you are. Don't change yourself. So that's the theme for tale two. And then Millie, so Millie, she doesn't care about life. She does not 
next to you. She doesn't care about life. She doesn't care about herself. Like, she literally does not care. Like, totally does not care. And when she finds this, you know, animatronic bear at the junkyard, or, oh no, or her father works on him, or I don't know if she found him. Her father, like, worked at it and stuff, like, like in, her, in his workshop. And I guess he gave it to her. So, and she, and like, obviously she, like, she, she was going through something. She, like, she, you know, she had, you know, she didn't really care. She, she basically did not care about herself. She didn't care if she wanted to live or not. So, in the, in the end, she ended up going to the, um, the workshop with Antronic Bear and the, and she went inside, you know, like a cavity or it's Funtime Freddy or Molten Freddy, I don't remember. I'm not sure which specifically. But she went to there, it closed up, and then, you know, the Tronic Bear started talking, and then this gets a little bit bizarre. So, like, graphic coming up. So, if you don't watch this, you don't want, because these books are graphic. Like, the Fazbear Frights books are more graphic than the Silver Eyes trilogy. So, yeah. So, continuing on, the the bear asks um, her what type of death she wants. And she just says, the quickest, the quickest death. But the bear's like excited. Like, he, he's like, he's telling her these types of deaths she wants. Like, any type of killings to like, any types of deaths, basically. And what ends up happening is she decides she wants her to get beheaded. And then in the end, she gets beheaded. That's the end. It just says that. So, very graphic. But yeah, I'm sorry. It's the book. I am reviewing it. So, but I, I enjoy these books. Like, if you're not into horror, don't read these books. If, and if you're not into graphic, don't read these books. Okay. But I hope you enjoyed this review of Into the Pit, number one of the Fazbear Frights books. Anyways. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.